Now, each QML object has a property called state, which is going to determine what the state of the object uh, currently is. It also has a collection of states. The collection of states is represented by an array of the QML type state. Each state item can modify a targeted item's properties and run scripts. And each of these state items in the collection is going to have a, a property name that's a string uh, that's going to allow us to uh, tell the state property what state we're in. Now, before we can really define any states, we have to set up our application a little bit. So here in our simple example, we're going to set up uh, something similar to a stoplight. We're going to have two lights. We've given them both IDs, and this is going to be important so that we can refer to the um, items later by their IDs, stoplight and go light, respectively, when we want to change their properties. Uh, also, at this time, we're going to set their default properties for any, uh, any properties. So we were going to set their color, uh, their position, and their size. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and set up our array of states. And this is where all the uh, magic happens. We start an array with our state's property. Uh, it is in the square brackets. Here we have our state items. Our first state item, uh, we've given a name stop. And our second state item, we've given a name go. Uh, this is the string that we're going to use to set the state property for our root item later on. Now, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to add some property changes. States don't do anything if we just define a name. So here we're going to use the QML type property changes. This has uh, two properties here. One, uh, the one property here that we have to set is target. That is the target uh, ID of the item, which proper, which the item that's properties we want to change. Here we are changing the color property. Um, we're only changing one uh, property in our example. However, we could have changed additional properties here, such as the X, Y, height, or almost any other property that our target has. The, uh, the properties that we can't change are going to be the parent and the anchors. If we want to change those, we must use the anchor changes or the parent change item instead of the property changes. Now, continuing on with our example, we've completed both of our states here. So in our stop state, we're going to have two property changes. One is going to target the stop light, and one is going to target the go light. Uh, the one for the stop light is going to change the stop light's color to red, and the one for our uh, go light is going to change its color to black. So when we enter this state, those color properties will be applied to those items. Now. If we look at the other state, we have our go state. Our go state, our stop light, is going to be set to black. And our go light, uh, its color is going to be set to green. Now we have a collection of states, but we have no way to switch between them. Now, as I mentioned earlier, we have a state property that determines what state our item is in. Now, here in this example, we're going to define our default state for our root item by setting it to be bound to stop. Now, a common mistake here that a lot of people make is instead of setting the state property here, they'll try to set the state's property to one of these. This, of course, isn't going to work because the state's property with the, the plural with the S at the end is holding your collection of states. So what we're going to do is we're just going to add a mouse area. Our mouse area is going to fill the parent, which is going to be the uh, root item here. And on click, we're just going to see if the state is stopped. We'll change it to go. Otherwise, uh, we're going to change the state to stop. Now, if we take a second and uh, run this example, we can see what happens here is um, our default state. We've entered the stop state where our light is red for our stop light and our go light is green. And when I click on this, uh, our state will be uh, change to the go state where our go light is now green and our stop light is now black. Um, one thing to note here is by default, our stop light has a color of red 
and our go light has a color of green. So if we were not entering the stop state, this light would be red and this light would be green when we started the application. Now, this is not the only way that we can uh, tell the slot, the states um, how they change. We can let them decide on their own when they should be entered. And this is going to be done by setting the when property of the state. And this property is going to evaluate an expression to see whether or not that state should be active. Now, it's important to know if you're using these whens, it, you, can, you need to make sure that only one state is active at a time. Uh, if multiple states in a group evaluate to true, the default properties are going to be applied. So let's also look at an example for how this type works. Here we have our conditional state. What I've done here is uh, we are not entering a state on our item. And our mouse area is given now an ID and we're accepting uh, button presses here. So when we have the left button pressed, we're going to be in what was our stop state. And when I press the right button on my mouse, we're going to be in what used to be the go state. So if I run this application, we'll see that by default, we're in that state that we didn't name before where each one of them is lit with their color. Uh, when I press down the left button, we enter what used to be the stop state. When I release that and I push the uh, right button, mouse button, we're now in the go state. Now, if I hold this down and push the left button as well, you can see that we've entered back to the, uh, the default uh, settings for our properties. So just to reiterate, here's an example of setting up a, uh, the state condition for when. We're going to make our item. We're going to give it a mouse area inside of it. Uh, then we're going to go ahead and define a state. Uh, the state, we are going to set a when property. In this case, when our clicked area is pressed. Uh, and then we're going to set our property changes. Uh, for us, we want to make our circle green. Uh, so in this example, we would just target the uh, red circle and set its color to green. Now, just like in the example code that we ran, when we release it, the color is going to go right back to what the default color property was. Thanks for watching. If you want to learn more, please subscribe to our channel and check out the free QML programming course on our website. The link is in the description.